All right, welcome back. Here we are in the workshop once again. It's still a mess. Let's get to work. We got a, what is this? This is a missile command board. Doesn't work. Let's see what happens when we boot it up. That, nothing really. Okay, so that's not good. All right, so what are the rules of fixing stuff? Rule one, always check your power. So we got here our multimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and check. Uh, we got a ground loop right here. I love Atari boards because they have ground loops everywhere. They have uh, test points everywhere. So we got a ground loop right here. And let's test this to uh, top right corner of a uh, pin. Now we got, number's not good, 4.72, turn it up a little bit, um, it's at max, that's concerning. Um, that's, something's destroying the power here. But I think we're, that's good enough to work with right now. Um, So, we power, power is alright, it's questionable, that's, that's concerning, I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind, because something is, is, is sucking the power from this thing. Um, I have noticed that this board does have quite a bit, well not quite a bit, but some repair here, you can see the dark spots there, um, like here, 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 and I can see some vias are actually missing here, like, this via is actually in between a couple of different things that's not good so let's go ahead and get rid of that yeah, that could be shorting something I don't think that's the issue though still gonna get that here so I'm, I'm a little concerned about these repairs anytime I see a board that's repaired um, unless the, the, the the repair looks super good. It concerns me. Um, this looks not horrible, but um, it's inconsistent. The, repair, the solder joints are inconsistent, and some of them are not very good. Okay, so, all right, we um, make sure that's plugged in right. Test the power. Power looks good. What's next? We test the CPU clock and the... Um, Resets button, or the reset. So hopefully you can see my multimeter there, or my oscilloscope. And, all right, we're gonna put it on the, that's odd. We're putting it on the reset, and we have no reset means it thinks the game code is running. That's interesting. All right. Um, I'm going to usually look into that first thing, but I don't think I'm going to do that today. One, two, three. And we do have a good clock. All right. Um, that's interesting. Why is that not resetting? I swore. Well, you know what? It might might actually be... Re yeah, it is resetting. I, might, I just probably didn't have a clean... Or it is resetting. There you can see that line there got a clean okay so CPU power is questionable but probably within reasonable limits um, I've seen most of the commands work better or work fine with that power we are getting a reset so the reset switch is not stuck and we have a good clock so next thing we do memory so we got our fluke out here Notice I turn my power off as always. Take the CPU out. Okay. Put the CPU down, or that, that's not the CPU. That's the well, it is the CPU. It's a little daughter board, the Braze Multi Kit. I'm gonna put the C80. Uh, I'm sorry, not C8065, but two CPU pod in here. Turn on my Fluke first. And we got uh, power up, okay, set up, more, more, more till we get active force line, no, bus test. Oh, yeah, we didn't turn it on, helps. 
Bluff's just okay. Okay, so let's do a RAM long. I know the RAM on this one um, from the schematics, um, it's got a memory map, is 0 to 3FFF. So let's do a RAM long 0 to 3FFF. And what are we getting? Oh, it's running. And you can see, actually, it is actually doing something. So let's, uh, this might take a while. Um, let's wait till we get a response. Uh, let's come back. I mean, this, this actually can take like an hour and a half for a, a missile command um, entire RAM range. So uh, we'll take a break. Come back a little bit. All right, so we're back, and you can see that the uh, Fluke is telling me RAM DCD error at 0000, 000 bit 1, um, and that's very important. What a DCD error means is that some number of bits in the address line don't seem to matter. That is, in the case of this, we have a DCD um, at address 0, bit 1 doesn't matter. That means at address 0, the system doesn't know the difference when you do a read or, or you know like a read or a write when you compare when you're doing a test of address zero. The system believes that there's an error such that it doesn't matter what address bit one actually is set to whether it's zero or one. That means theoretically, if you write to address zero, it will actually show up when you read address two, or if you write to address two those changes will affect address zero because for some reason th these bits don't aren't actually acting correct which usually means that there's either a trace between these two lines maybe the address line is cut um, something's tied to ground or or plus five basically regardless of what address the CPU is as actually requesting the RAM chip address that is getting accessed is different um, than what the CPU is addressing based on whatever bit is stuck or not working correctly. So we know that we have a BTS error um, address 1 which means the RAM it's irrelevant whether address one is is set or not. Um, when the CPU writes to an address, it doesn't matter if the the, the, the bit is set or not. Um, meaning that let's, let's let's a good example of this is let's read address zero. Let's write address zero as five five. Okay. Um, if we don't care about the, the first address bit, then address 0 and address 2 should be the same. Um, if it doesn't matter. Because either it's set or not, so that these two addresses will theoretically be the same. When the CPU accesses them, there's an error that's causing um, one of these two addresses to be the one that's actually read. So let's read 0. And if this is true, when we read 2, we should get back 55. Okay, so something is wrong with the addressing here, where address bit 1 is not getting set, or something's, something's messed up with address bit 1. There's two ways you can handle this problem. You can go from back from the RAM, the address lines, and try to view them as, we're, we're, as they're setting, and try and set, set them yes or no, or on or off. Um, back from the RAM, or you can go from the CPU standpoint forward. Um, it really doesn't matter. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. Whatever works for you. Um, sometimes it's easier to go forward, sometimes it's easier to backwards. Because miss, I usually I go backwards from the RAM, but missile command addressing is a mess. So I want to actually go forwards, I think, because it's just simpler. At least it's going to be easier to explain if I find an error um, what's going on. So I'm going to go forward and make sure everything is getting set. So um, the CPU, the first thing that address bit 1 hits once it leaves the CPU is this chip right here, AB1. It's a buffer chip, 
74LS244, and it should hit it at pin 6. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a write to address 0 and loop. And I'll just sit right 55. doesn't matter. I'm looping. I want to actually see how this looks when it hits the buffer. So um, I, I, need to, I need somewhere to judge the signal. Um, so when, when I do a write, the, C, the CPU is actually going to assert the, it's going to make the write line go low. So that will be an easy trigger point. So, and I'm also going to do, so remember that six, I'm also going to do, um, I'm going to write a note here. I know that line, address one goes to six, and address zero goes to eight and address 2 goes to 4 on, on that chip. Um, bear with me why I'm doing this. I'm going to actually change my display so you guys can see here. The VGA on. I'll change the input to this. Hopefully we can follow along. Okay. So, all right. I'm doing a loop, writing to address 0, and um, I want to patch into the the right line. I have to switch my. I have to figure out where the right line goes. Um, right line uh, comes out C4 pin eight. So C4 pin eight. Here we go. Let's attach my grounding strap so I get a nice clean read here. C4 pin 8. Okay, so we should be able to see here that I have a nice, that's my right signal. So let's look at pin 6 on address, or um, um, on this pin when that happens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And look at that. That's weird. That's neither high nor low. That's called floating odd. That shouldn't be floating. That should be either high or low. All right, let's try something else. Let's actually set that address bit to 1. So to set that to 1, we would be actually writing to um, address zero or address 2, because that pin, pin is set to 1. So that should be high when we write to that. Let's write to 2 and measure it again. Okay, let's look at pin 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Again, if I write a 1 there, it's also floating. That's not right. So something's up. Um, why would that be floating? Um, there's really no reason why, except for maybe connectivity is bad between the socket and the, the chip. So we'll check that next. But just a sanity check, let's check another address line. Um, make sure that any of the other address lines should be 0 right now. So let's look at address line uh, 2, which is pin 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's definitely low. Okay. Um, let's look at another address line, just for fun. Let's look at address line 0, which is pin 8. Two, three, low. Okay, so something's definitely not right. That, that's not right. That's floating. It should never be floating. Just sanity check to make sure the other ones aren't floating, just in case, like, I'm doing something completely wrong by looking at the wrong chip or something. Um, that's not right. So I think we found our issue here. We're going to test that theory by testing the... Um, we're going to test the, oops, caster fell off. No problem, not a problem. Those are pretty useless anyway. So let's just test the connectivity between these pins. So pin 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 is pin 6, goes to pin, pin, 10, pin 10 on the CPU is address line 1. And it goes to pin 6 on the chip, which is... I always get confused when I flip them. Okay, we got connectivity from the bottom. But that's, that's obvious, because we have a clear trace. Maybe our socket is bad. Is our socket bad? Let's find out. Let's put a, something in here so I can get in there and measure it. I'm just going to put one of these machine pin sockets in. And we'll go to pin 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and pin 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, no contactivity. We got a bad socket. I'm almost guaranteed that's the issue. Um, it has to be an issue. There might be more issues, but we have no signal for address line one going into the address buses, so that's that's not good. So I've replaced the socket. Let's make sure we have connectivity. It should be pin 10 from the CPU. The cables are all jumbled up here. Pin 10 from the CPU. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. To pin 6 on this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now we have connectivity. That, that, that's better. H hook up the fluke. Make sure everything is good. And let's do that test again. Okay, so we're going to do a loop, a right loop. And already this is interesting. You see what comes up on my, my screen? So as well, okay, and because it, it's paused right now, but it started actually running code, which tells me a lot of what I need to know already. But um, let's do that. Read at, or I'm sorry, write at zero, and let's see what we got here. Okay, so we have to put, attach our ground. We're going to attach uh, C4 is the right signal. We've got to loop that. C4 is the right signal. And pin 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Look at that. It's nice and clean low. I'm going to go ahead, uh, just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, tell this thing to start up. Tell the fluke to start running code. And look at that. It's running. So, um, when I fix this board, when I, I'll go through and actually do a good lo long RAM test to make sure everything's good. But uh, that was our problem. We had a bad uh, socket. It's very rare I actually see that. Um, I mean, all right, I see bad sockets a lot. But not really. Usually it's like, especially on missile command boards, it's usually literally the RAM. Um, so eh, that was neat. But that was a neat troubleshooting experience. You got to see how to use the, how to diagnose that, how to use the oscilloscope to to check the signals are going, how to use the fluke, to tie the fluke into that to actually make sure you're setting signals. Um, so I hope you learned something here. Um, I think this board is done. I'm going to replace the sockets on this and, and, and also this guy here. Um, it's pokey because it probably could use it. Um, and I'm going to clean up the board, resolder some of these uh, capacitors are falling off, give it a good give it a good uh, RAM test to make sure that the RAM is, you know, uh, successfully completes. It's running game code, so I think it's good, but I want to make sure it's stable for the user, and then I'll let, let it burn in for a while. All right, thanks. Hope you learned a lot. So if you like this video, please hit the uh, like button and check out my Patreon page at patreon.com arcades. Thanks a lot.